Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of my Midnight Meditations when I come on and talk about what the Lord would have me to come on and talk about. I pray you had a good week. I pray you had time to spend with the Lord and that you prayed in your most holy faith and that you read the word. Just spent time in his presence. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. I thank him. Thank him for this opportunity of coming on and sharing with you what he, t what he shared with me this week. What he would have me to come on and share with you, rather. So I don't have a song. Not going to play one. Just going to pray and get right into the word. Because tomorrow is a big day. And I'm going to be in church a lot. So I need my energy. So I'm going to do what thus says the Lord, my assignment. And then I'm going to relax, hallelujah, get some rest. So let's just jump right into it. Like I said, I pray you had a good week. And I pray you're ready to learn something new or just to be refreshed or just to spend some time with me. Hallelujah. I just thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to say thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being wonderful. Thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for giving us a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance and another chance. Who is like you? Lord, you are good. You are good in every way. Even when we don't understand what's going on, you're good. Because we know that you love us because you are love. So we just thank you, Lord God, for your word because we know that it is spirit. It is life. It is live and it is true. We pray that you plant it in our hearts, Lord God, in the soil, the very fabric of our being. So that we don't sin against you, but we grow in you to become like you. For that is our hope to be Christ in, our, in us, the hope of our glory. So we pray, Father God, that you will let your spirit permeate the atmosphere. Speak through me, Lord God, and let all those who hear your word receive it with the love that you sent it with, Lord God. Because it's not by, my, not by power, but only by your spirit that I have to sit here, Lord God, that I can sit here. It's only because of you. I love you and I thank you. So have your way this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray our bar and we receive it with faith, by faith. Amen. 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 I'm going to pull up my lesson. I'm going to get right into it so we can get in, hit it and quit it, as they say. Hallelujah. And once my computer decides it wants to work. We can do that. Because clearly it's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning I'm going to be discussing the gospel truth. And I'm going to start with Mark chapter 1, verse 9. Sorry, Italia. Let your will be done, Lord God, and your word go forth with power. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark 1, verse 9, reads as thus. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting, and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. And then a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the spirit drove him, Jesus, into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels came, excuse me, and the angels came to minister to him. Now after excuse me, John 
after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. I'm going to read the end of that again. And Jesus was there, Mark 1, read it for yourself. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days. This is Jesus, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now I titled this, he titled this, the gospel truth, because this is the truth of the gospel. Master Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the king of this world, the king of this realm, heaven and earth belong to him, said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand believe in the gospel. This was the message, the gospel of the kingdom of God. This is the gospel, the kingdom of God being here. That's what Jesus talked about. That's the message that the kingdom of God is at hand. According to Mark, that's what Jesus said. That's the beginning. That's the first thing that he said. That's his message. And when you go through the New Testament, you find out that that's all Jesus talked about was the gospel. That was his gospel. That was the good news, that the kingdom of God is here. That is the good news, that we don't have to live according to Satan's system anymore. We don't have to live according to this world system. We have a new one, the kingdom of God. And that's, that's the message that that we don't talk about enough, you know, because the promises are in the kingdom. All the blessings are in the kingdom. That is the blessing. That's why master said, that's the gospel. That's the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, repent and believe in the gospel. That is the gospel, the kingdom of God. And we don't talk about the fact that that there is another kingdom here and that that's where we need to concentrate on. He says, he said, that's it. That's the gospel. That's the good news. This is the gospel truth. And it often gets understated. We try to talk about all the other aspects about what the disciples did and all the miracles that master did. But all of that stuff was because the kingdom of God is, was with him. He brought it with him on his shoulders. I talked about that last week. Upon his shoulders came the whole government. The kingdom of God is a governmental system that we live in. And no, you can't see it. It's not located. I'm jumping around again. But it's so important that we talk about this kingdom more. That people think about the kingdom and, and try to get themselves in line with the kingdom's way. Because that's the gospel truth. The kingdom is here. And once you get into it, it's beautiful. And no weapon formed against you can prosper because you're in another system. Master explains in Mark 13, 19, why we don't talk about it. Why it's not as prevalent as all the other things that we talk about when it comes to the scriptures, like all the stuff that Paul teaches us about you know, how to present our bodies like living sacrifices and how to overcome the devil and submit to God. All that stuff comes to you when you get the Holy Spirit and he leads you into the kingdom. That's part of the transformation. All of that stuff, submitting your body on, as a temple because he takes it over. That's the kingdom's way. And, and the enemy has no power because it's a whole new system. But the enemy doesn't want us to talk about it because he doesn't want us to get in it. And Master explains that in Matthew 13, 19. 
He says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away that was sown into their heart. The enemy doesn't want you to know that there's a kingdom that is available to you. He doesn't want us to talk about it and tell other people about it because once they get in it, he can't touch them anymore. He doesn't have any power over them anymore because the Holy Spirit transforms you by, by God's power, by his spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. It gets done. The angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord, and all of that is in the kingdom. The evil one comes to kill our bodies with disease. He comes to steal the seed of God's word, his truth from our heart, and destroy our plans and dreams and progress that God has for us. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to keep us from becoming the image of Christ. But Master said, but, but don't worry about that. He says, I've overcome the enemy. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, the only way you have abundant life is to get into the kingdom. Inside the kingdom, there's love and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that leads us there, which is why it's so important to have him inside of you so he can transform you into this image of Christ that gives you the kingdom. Oh, it's so wonderful. We begin to transform in our mind. And, and, and that's where it starts from. It starts from the way we think, what we believe. That's why he said, repent and believe in the, king, in the gospel, that the kingdom of God is here. That is the good news. And once we start to think on it, we will transform. Because Proverbs 23 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So once we start to transform our mind to realize that we're in another system, we were born again into a new system, into a way of doing and being and breathing and having our being. That's the kingdom of God. Matthew 3, 1 says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. That was the message that John spoke before Jesus got here. He was to prepare the way for Jesus. And that was it. He was trying to prepare people's mind to receive the kingdom of God. We don't talk about the kingdom of God as much as we should. We should be blowing that up everywhere we go because that's the key to get people involved. That's the key to make people realize you don't have to live in poverty, in a poverty mentality. You don't have to live with lack. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, running together, shall be given. All of that happens when you get into the kingdom. God supplies for all your needs according to his riches and glory in the kingdom of God. And we don't have to wait until we die because it's not a place. It's not a location. It's a system, a governing system that we live by that changes our life completely. It changes your life. You got to try it. You like it. It's, 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 it's joy and peace. It really is in the Holy Spirit. It really is. Master said, repent and believe the gospel. Repent is what John cried from the wilderness to a world that was lost in their own ideology. We got to come out of our own thinking and talk about what Jesus talked about. Not so much about what he did. Because what he did, he did because he was in the kingdom. Because he brought the kingdom. He's the king of it. It's his. He was showing us the way. To be like him. To do what he did. To have what he had. It's all in the kingdom. We got to start believing it. And speaking about it. And sharing the good news that there is another way. You don't have to live the way you're living. There's a better way, the kingdom way. Master said in Matthew 7, 13, enter through the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Only a few are going to find their way into the kingdom because we don't talk about it enough. And when we do talk about it, the enemy tries to steal it out of whoever's listening as quick as we get it out. So we got to we got to talk about it more to keep him busy since he's trying to steal it from everybody. So we got to keep it in everybody's ear. Because Master said, as soon as we talk about the gospel of the kingdom of God being here, the enemy comes, if you don't understand it right away, he comes and snatches it away from you. So the seed never really gets planted. And then you try to do all these Christian acts on your own accord. And you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. You can't find your way into the kingdom without the Holy Spirit because it's a transformation from one kingdom to another, from the darkness of this world that we see, hallelujah, into the light of the unseen that manifests itself in your life. It changes the way your life is. It changes the way you perceive life. And things just happen. All good. All things truly work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, which is to get into the kingdom. That was his purpose, that we all get into the kingdom. That's why he sent Jesus back here to give it to us again. He said, but we, and that's why we need to enter into the narrow gate. That is the narrow gate because the enemy tries to keep us out of it. Everybody won't get in unless they transform themselves. That's what makes it narrow. You get you get transformed. And a lot of the unnecessary stuff that we carry around from the world gets stripped away from us so we can enter in. The gate is small, but the road leads to life. And it really does change your life. It makes it better and it, God provides. He's not a man that he should lie. But you got to get in this kingdom in order to receive it. That's the path to righteousness. It's narrow because there's not much wiggle room. He conformed. You have to conform to it. And, and, and oh, you just have to adjust yourself. But the first thing to do is to believe. Believe that the kingdom of God is here now and available to us. Available to anyone who can believe, who can change their mind to receive the things that God said you can have in the kingdom. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not how he was born. Not, you know, be born again. Because you have to be born again. What is that about? It's about being born into a new kingdom. You're being born into a new system, a new operating system of ways of doing things. And they benefit you when you do things according to the kingdom's way. Just like we pay taxes in this realm, in the kingdom, we pay tithe. When you want to receive something in the kingdom realm, you give. And it'll be given back to you. Good measure again. There was a system. And, and as you grow in the Holy Spirit, he transforms your mind. And you start to receive it. You start to believe it. You start to, to produce it. You start to do the will of God. And, and it benefits everything. We got to start paying more attention to the fact that, that we're in a new system. And we don't walk by what we see. We walk by what we understand from this new system. That's the faith. The trust we have in this new system is our faith. That's the overcoming thing. That's what transforms us. What we believe, we shall receive. If we doubt not. Master says in 631. So don't worry saying. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? 
Or what shall we wear? Or how is my rent going to get paid? Or what about my children? I'm paraphrasing now. But that's really what he's saying. When he's saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? How are we going to handle these situations? He says, for the pagans, those people who don't believe, those people who don't have him as Lord, run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 6, 31, Master says this. Don't worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear, how your bill's going to get paid. When you get into the kingdom, these things are supplied by you, for you. Because you're in a new system. And when you operate according to that system, it gives you what that system promises. Because God is not a man that he should lie. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like a pearl. The kingdom of God is like a treasure. The kingdom of God, have faith as a mustard seed in the kingdom of God. And you'll speak to those mountains of doubt and tell them to move because your mind becomes transformed. You renew it with the word. You get a new understanding of what the promises mean. And they benefit and it works. So you have to seek first the kingdom and then, and the way it's ran, that's what it means. And for, you know, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing it, his system. And once you discover his system, oh, hallelujah, it starts to work for you. You work it and it works. It cannot fail. Heaven and earth will pass away before God's word fails. It can't fail once you start to work it. But you got to get into the kingdom. You got to change your mindset from this world's way into the kingdom's way of doing it. And the door opens. And he says that that's the priority in life. To, the, to seek the kingdom. Knock on that door, on that gate until it opens. Seek it until you find it. Ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. He won't withhold anything good from you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. That's what the knock until it opens and seek and you shall find and ask and it shall be given. That's what that's about. Knocking on the door, the gate till it's open. Seeking, finding the gate first. Hallelujah. And then ask him for the Holy Spirit so you can find him to the gate. I'm not worried about no hiccups because you're not going to stop this word. My voice is going to go forth because God said I have to give it to you. And I'm going to do what he says because I want the well done. I'm in the kingdom and this is working for me. So since he, he's the king and he asked me to do it, I do what the king says. But greater is he that is in me that he that is in this world. So I'm not going to let my hiccup stop me. God is too good. He's too wonderful for me to sit on this beautiful word and not share it and not tell you that there's a better way to live. This kingdom is amazing and you don't have to wait to die to get the benefits of it. It's here for us to live now in the land of the living so that others can see it and say, what must we do to be saved? But if you're not in the kingdom, producing the kingdom's manifestations in your life, then nobody's going to be like, well, what's so fabulous about it? These are signs and wonders too. To me, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful sign and the little things that he does. I'm not even talking about the grand scale of things like keeping you healthy and paying your bills. Just the little, the little nuances of love that he gives is just amazing. I'm just telling you, this is a key that you really need to get. This is a, a way of life that's just too good, too good not to want to share. Luke 17, 20 says, once on being asked by the Pharisee when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, 
The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. He's like, it's not a geographical location. It's a state of being, baby. He said, it's in your midst right now. You don't even understand it because they're looking for something with their natural eye and you can't see it. It's an experience. It's a way of being and it transforms your natural realm. It transforms your environment. It really does. It changes everything. It changes your, your, your marriage. It changes your children. It changes your lifestyle. It changes things. And I'm telling you what I know, not something I read in a book. I'm telling you what I'm living. Things are changing. Blessings are overflowing, not just for me, for people in my family, my my. My household, hallelujah. He said he saved not just you, but your household. He does. He's transforming. I can't even tell you how I'm watching him just, just transform the, the, my environment. It's like, it's like if the, the word is flowing out of me like rivers of living water and it's nurturing everything in my environment. And it's, it's so good, I can't even explain it. There are really no words for me to say. I start talking in tongues because there's no natural word for me to explain how wonderful it is to watch the kingdom manifest itself in my life. Because he said, you can't say, Luke 17, he told it, you know, he told the Pharisees, he said, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. You can't see it with your natural eyes. It's experienced. You got to experience it. It's, it's amazing. And it came with Jesus. He brought it upon his shoulders. Isaiah 9, 6 says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us the son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's all of those things. He brought it with him. It came with Jesus. And then when he died, he paid for us to get it. Hallelujah. And then when he rose, he gave it to us. But you got to receive it. You got to receive it in your heart. You got to receive it in your mind. You got to ask him to let his spirit lead you into the ways of doing and being in him. It's in him that we move and breathe and have our being in that kingdom. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing. The government that arrived on the shoulders of Jesus is the kingdom of God. This is his kingdom, the one that he laid down his life to purchase, the one he rose to reinstate, just what I told you. The kingdom of God is mentioned in the New Testament over 80 times, and it's done so, so that we will understand its importance. We must enter in to gain access to the benefits and provisions promised by God the Father. He said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. The keys, we have the keys, the principles are ours. They're all in the book. Those are the keys, the principles that unlock the treasures of the kingdom in our life. They unlock the treasures of the kingdom in our life. And all your gifts and all your talents will be manifested through his spirit as we go into the kingdom, as we grow into the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. I just don't want anyone to miss it. It's just too amazing. It's too wonderful a place of a state to be in, not to want to share it with you. Hosea 6, 6, Master says, God spoke. He says, Hosea, to hold through Hosea, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. We're supposed to be a royal priesthood. 
but we can't be a royal priesthood or a peculiar people without the knowledge that he's given us. And that is the knowledge. That is the gospel truth. The kingdom of God is here. You waiting for the manifestation, but we are the manifestation. And when Jesus comes back, it's going to be for judgment to see if we believed in his word, in his gospel, in his gospel. What did Jesus say? We always talk about what would Jesus do? No, 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 no. What did he say? Not about what he would do. What did he already tell us to do? He already told us to seek the kingdom of God first before we do anything. Seek the kingdom of God and all the stuff that we're worried about, all the stuff that we're stressing out over will be added to us, will be given to us because it's part of the kingdom's program. He provides for our needs according to his riches and glory. And he owns everything. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything in it, on it and underneath it, belong to him. So all of our needs are met through him, our king who provides for us. That's the truth. That's the gospel truth. And the truth is the light. And it shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it because the enemy does not want you to get into the kingdom. Because once you are in, there's no backseas. And you, you can live this life now. We don't have to wait till we die to receive the benefits of it. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. We just got to use them. The kingdom of God is the only kingdom that we will experience the benefits of the Bible in. That's why he gave it back to us. So that we could have the benefits of eating again in our life. The joy of communing with the Lord again. John 18, this is long, not really. John 18, 36, Jesus says, Master says in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, so you're a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. He came to bear witness of the truth. And what was the truth that he spoke? Repent. The kingdom of God is here. Believe in the gospel. And that is the gospel he spoke, Mark 1, to repent. Because the kingdom of God is here. He said, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born. Yeah, I'm a king. But my kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world. Because this world is doomed already. It's, it's already cursed. And it is doomed for destruction. The Bible says so. Not me, God. God said it was cursed. When Adam broke the rules, the earth was cursed. When Satan took over, the earth was cursed. That's why he instituted a whole new system for those who want a better way out. For those who don't want to go down with Satan, get into the kingdom and get your life together according to God's will. And it's not like you got to stop enjoying life. It's just a different way. And it's beautiful. This is the gospel truth. Master came to redeem us from the penalties of our sinful nature. He came to save us from the curse that is upon this earth system. He came to reinstate the plan of God for humanity. The king, thy kingdom come. Ah, the his son I need. Yes, we pray it. In the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Thy kingdom has come. Now it's up to us to do his will on earth just like it's being done in heaven in the heavenly realms for his is the kingdom 
For his is the power. For his is the glory. Forever and ever. We pray it. We say it when we say the Lord's Prayer. We, we write it off. It, rip it off our tongues like that. Not even paying attention to what we're saying anymore. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. His will is for the kingdom, for all of us to be in it. Unfortunately, not everybody's going to make it because not everybody's going to believe because the enemy has so many people blind. And we don't tell them that, you know, instead of beating them over the head about, you know, living a sinful life, tell them about the kingdom, how wonderful it is in the kingdom. And then once they start seeking it, the God will do the rest. He'll do the transforming. The Holy Spirit is the transformer. He'll do all of that. We don't have to worry about it. Once they start seeking the kingdom, the dead stuff the, will fall off. The weights will be lifted because they'll be running the race to get in. This is the key to righteousness. And it's found in the Holy Spirit. He's the guy. He leads us. He's the key to the transformation that creates the new creature the born again person. Once we are born into this kingdom, we have a right to get in. Now we have to transform ourselves from one system to another, from one way of doing things to another way. But that comes when you start seeking the kingdom, when you start seeking the righteousness of the kingdom. That's what Jesus talked about. That's how come, you know, the people was coming. They were coming for the signs and wonders too, but that follows the kingdom preaching. He was telling them how it is in the kingdom. There's no sickness in the kingdom. For Jesus bore all the stripes, all them, all the stripes so that we would be free from sickness. He bore all our transgressions and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we're healed. That's kingdom principle. But it happens when you become a kingdom citizen. It's not for everybody. It's only for citizens. And if you're not actively created, actively working the system, you're not going to get the benefits. Just like if you don't pay your taxes at the end of the year, you don't get no refund or you go to jail. Because we have governmental systems that we must, we have laws and principles that we must apply in this natural life. We have laws and principles we must apply in the spiritual life, in the kingdom. Master said in John 16, 13, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. We all know that the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that guides us into this truth. He's the one that's teaching it to me. He's transforming my life and everybody around me. It's real. This is why Abba sent the promise, the gift of the spirit, so that we could be transformed into the image of his dear son. Abba wants us to gain the understanding of his truth. He don't want us to be lost. He didn't create us to be us separated from him. He created us to be communion with, to commune with him. To, he created, created us to be his sons and his daughters, to live in Eden, which is communion with God. Paradise is his presence. In him is fullness of joy. That's paradise. But that's, that's, that's only possible when we're in the kingdom, being transformed. And I'm not saying every day is sunny, but the perception, the way I perceive it is different. Even bad days aren't bad because I can find good in everything because all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose or in his kingdom. It's real. It's real stuff. And the Heavenly Father wants us to gain this understanding so that we can overcome the evil influences that stand against those things that, you know, he's trying to give us. We won't give the enemy so much power over our lives because we'll, we, we won't be a part of it anymore. We'll be in the world, but we will no longer be of it. Its system doesn't run me. It doesn't apply to me. Hallelujah. 
because I'm in the world, but I'm no longer of it. I'm of another system. I'm of another kingdom. And the things of my kingdom are greater than the things in this one because my king is the true king. He's God, not a fallen cherub. And that's the reality of it. Master said in Matthew 16, 19, hallelujah, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Keys, principles, principles that are stronger, more powerful, and above the enemy. Master made a mockery of the enemy when he died, took the authority from him, went to hell, took the authority from him and left. He put him under his feet. The enemy has no power. Devil has no power over Jesus. He searched him and could find nothing in him because master overcame that so that we could live in him and don't have to worry about the power of the enemy. He has no power. That's why at the name of my master Jesus, every knee shall bow. Demons tremble and run from the name of Jesus. When you're in the kingdom and you understand whose power and authority you running, running under, you change the way you think about things. And whatever I bind on earth is bound in the spiritual realm. Satan can't touch it because it belongs to the Lord and the Lord said I could have it. All authority has been given over to him. All authority. And he has given us the keys to the kingdom. Those are principles that allow us to bind the enemy's power over our lives and the lives of those who we are given to oversee, our family. But you can't gain access to those keys until you enter into his kingdom. It's not automatic. You got to be transformed. He ain't letting everybody in. It's not a free for all. It's not an open door policy. The path is narrow. Because we have to make some adjustments to get through the gate. You just can't get in with, without the Holy Spirit's guidance. You got to be transformed. Otherwise, demons would get in. So you got to be transformed. You got to get rid of the stinking thinking. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He gets rid of that stinking thinking. He helps us transform our mind to conform ourselves into the image of his son. It's all about this kingdom. It's all about this kingdom. Paul says, well, I don't know if Paul wrote it, but Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangled us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Keep your mind on Jesus, who did, who paid the price for you to get in. Keep your mind. Don't worry about what the enemy is doing. Don't worry about what the enemy is saying. What did God say? I know what the world is saying. I know what the government is saying. I know what Biden is saying and Fauci and everybody. I know what all them people are saying. I know what they say. But what did God say? Because God's word is the truth. Every man is a liar. But God's word is true. What did he say? He said, Come into the kingdom. Come all who are heavy, weary and heavy laden. Come on. Come into my kingdom. I'll give you rest. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all that stuff you're stressing over will be added to you. Come on. I'll give you rest. I'm the good shepherd. Come into my garden. John 10. Come in and out. I'll give you all your provisions. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in the kingdom. That's the good news. That's the gospel truth. To get into the kingdom. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent. The kingdom of God is arrived. It's here. And it's available to all those who diligently seek it. 
You got to look. You got to seek. You got to seek. You got to ask God to help you get it. That's what Nicodemus wanted. He wanted to get into the kingdom. He said, I know you're a wonderful teacher. I know you got something going on. How you get into this kingdom? Jesus said, you got to be born again. Unless a man be born again, he can't get in. That's what being born again is all about. Being born into this new kingdom. You can't, you can't, you know, get a membership card. You got to be born into it because it's a whole new spiritual realm. So your spirit being has to be regenerated so that you can be transformed. Oh, so then you can finally, you know, get translated. But you got to be born again. And that's what the regeneration is about, being born again. And you get born into this new system. And in this new system, this new government, this new way of being, there's a whole, they got their own language. They got their own system. They got their own principles. It's a whole new government. Hallelujah. And you got to change to get in the government. It's not like you go to Cuba and you don't learn how to speak Spanish. You go to Cuba, you need to learn how to speak Spanish. Why? Because that's the governmental language. Everybody's speaking over there. So you really need to learn it. That's all I'm saying. When you get into this kingdom, it has its own language. It has its own principles. It has its own king. It has its own system. But it's good. All of it is good. It's so wonderful. It's amazing. Acts 17, 26 says, From one man he made all the nations, so that they would inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he's not far from any of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring because we're born again. God created every man, but every man is not his child. Unless you are born again, you are not a child of God. You're his creation. And yes, he loves his creation, but only his children get his inheritance. There's a difference. Me, I'm a child. I'm no longer a creation. I want you to be my brothers and sisters in, in the new creation. Hallelujah. In this wonderful kingdom. We're the sheep of his pastures. Because we live in him. And his word lives in us. His spirit is alive. Because his word is spirit and truth. So if his word is alive in me, then I'm a new creation. And that happens when you allow his Holy Spirit to live in you and guide you. He won't be far from you. It's like he promised. Because he'll be in you. He said, I won't be with you. I'll be in you. And I'll never leave you or forsake you because I'm in you now. And that's his gospel truth. Master's truth is the gospel. He, Master said in John 14, 17, the spirit of truth the world can't accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore. But you'll see me because I live and you will also live. And on that day when I come to you, I real you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The Holy Spirit talking. The same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus is talking now and saying, the world don't know the spirit of truth. They can't accept them because they can't see them. Because everything got to be seen with the natural eye for the world. But not for us. We walk by faith in what God said, not by what we see. And we call those things that we don't see as they should be so that they will be. Because the things that come out of our mouth are powerful because God is in us. 
So our words are life too. Hallelujah. And master said that he will say, for, but you know him for he lives with you. He was talking to the disciples because he was with the disciples. He said, but, and will be in you. And then he says, because I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. I'll come to you before long. The world won't see me anymore because I won't be walking around in this natural body. But you'll see me because he returned to spend time with them for 40 days. And he said, because I live, you will also live. And on that day when they saw him again, he said, you'll realize that I am in the Father and that you are in me and I am in you, the Holy Spirit. That's the spirit of truth. That's the spirit that lives inside of me. That's the spirit that's teaching me all this stuff. That's the spirit that's really telling me that using my vocal cords to talk to you. Because I couldn't do this apart from him. I wouldn't know any of this apart from him. He's the one that's teaching it me. He's the one that's transforming me into the image of Christ. I'm just sharing it with you. Because I want you to get in on it. Because it's too good for me to have it by myself. I want to share it. And that's what it's about. It's about, it's about, oh, it's about getting in this kingdom and getting this good life now, now. And it's not even all about having, you know, a fly house or a fly car or money, you know, six and 12 figures. In the, it's not, it's not about that, even though that stuff comes, but it's, it's about the peace that passes understanding. It's about the joy. That really is unspeakable. There's no word for it. I said I wasn't going to cry this time. And I'm not. But you got to recognize that Romans 8, 11 says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Because we're born again. When we're born, we're born. That spirit is born into us. That's what creates this new person. And he gives health to our mortal flesh. He, he leads us down the right way. He speaks to our heart and our mind, tells us which way to go. He'll tell you, don't go left, go right. He'll say, don't go down that block, go down this one. He's just, he's just with you all the time. John 17, 3 said, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That is eternal life. I'm, I'm not going to ever die. I may not always be in this flesh, but the real me will never die. I'm, I'm seated with him even now in the spiritual realm, in Christ. He's in me and I'm in him and he, we're, I'm in heaven with him. It's, heaven is here with me. It's all one kingdom now. And I'm in it and you need to be in it because it's awesome and it's wonderful. We have to experience, we get to experience life and have that more abundantly. We just have to obey the words of Jesus. We have to just obey God and seek first the kingdom and get in the kingdom. Baby, get in the kingdom. Knock, knock, knock until the door is open. Seek it until you find it. Ask him until he give you the Holy Ghost. Father sent, Father sent to bring deliverance. Father sent the Holy Spirit to bring deliverance. Jesus to sit. Basta. We must obey God's word, the words of Jesus, the one Father sent to bring deliverance to a dying world. Repent, the kingdom of God is here. It's here to all that believe. Master said in Mark 9, 23, everything is possible for the one who believes. Do you believe? Do you believe that this is the gospel? Do you believe that this is the truth of Jesus? The kingdom of heaven is our governmental process. It's a course of events whereby God begins to govern or rule as king and Lord in our life. The kingdom principles take an action by which God manifests his being God in the daily lives of those who believe, transforming them into the image of his dear son. That's really it. The kingdom of heaven is a governmental process. It's, it transforms us from one kingdom to another. 
from this world's way of thinking and doing and, and being to a new way of thinking and doing and being. And it's better. It really is better. And you become you you become a blessing to other people just merely by by being around them, I think. Because it seems like it's rubbing off on people that I'm around. They're becoming blessed. And as they get blessed, they're starting to realize where it's coming from. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to talk about the kingdom. I'm going to talk about my master. Because he's everything to me. He has done so much and shown me so much. And, and I am so yet to, I've got so much more to go. You know, I'm not even, I'm, not, I'm, I'm like just starting my fourth level of Isaiah 11, I'm just getting that whole, you know, spirit of my thing together with the praying. I mean, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard, nor has it even entered into my own mind, the things that he has for me, you know? But wow, already I'm like, wow. It's just amazing. You gotta get into this process. This course of events where God begins to govern and rule your life and teach and transform your mind. It's really a transformation. And peace is the end result. You don't really worry about it. You trust God. And you know his word. And once you learn his word, you recognize that he's not a man that he should lie. If he said it, then you gotta you gotta believe it because it's gonna happen. And the more you believe it, the faster it happens. The more faith you apply to it. And faith is more than just saying, you know, well, I'm waiting on God. Faith is action. It's doing the things that God tell you to do. When he say, get up and and go left, get up and go left. There's a blessing in it at the end. When he said, get up and pray, get up and pray. There's a blessing in it in the end. Whatever he tells you to do, like J Jesus' mother said when the boys came to him and, and asked him about the wine, she said, whatever my son say do, do it. That's how it is. Whatever he say do, do it. And it's going to end up good. Because they had the best wine they ever had in their life because they listened to Jesus. It's the same thing with us. Whatever he says, just do it. That's the kingdom principle. When the king tells you to do something, you do it because he's the king. And he blesses you for it. Oh, the kingdom principles take action. They take your action and they create an action. They bring manifestation in your life. They do. And I'm just getting started. Oh, I know. I already know some things I can't share yet, but God is awesome. And the things that he has for his children, oh, oh, you don't have room enough to receive, your heart don't have room enough to receive the love that is God's. Oh, how lastly, John 1, 10 says, he was in the world and through and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own didn't recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of a natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will. But and that's the truth. John 1, 10. Master was in the world. Spirit was in the world in Master. And through the world, and through and though the world was made through him, remember, nothing was made that wasn't made by him because he was in the beginning with God and in the beginning was God. And he was in the beginning with God. It was nothing made that wasn't made by him. The Holy Spirit was always there, hovering over the face of the waters of the earth, the dark. Hallelujah. When God said, light be, and shut down the devil's administration. Hallelujah. A new regime was being born. And Jesus came and brought it to us 
on his shoulders and he died to pay for it. Hallelujah. And that he rose so that we could rise again and not be defeated by this realm, by this demon, by this system that is set up to destroy us. He said he came, the world was made through him, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to that which was his own. He went to his own people and they didn't recognize him. They didn't receive him either. But to all of us who did receive him, for all of us who do believe, he gave us the right to become his children. Born not of a natural descent, not from my mom and dad, although I love them with all my heart. Not from a human decision, not because they decided to have me, not even because of my father's sperm. But I was Hallelujah. He has regenerated the spirit being inside of me, and now we are one. For his word is in me, and I am in him. And I shall ask whatever I will, and it shall be given unto me. And it is true. It is so true. So I just want to encourage you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything that you need, all your wants and your desires, the good ones. I'm not talking about no fast car, no husband and none of that stuff, but your peace of mind, your health, joy. And all that other stuff it comes to, I mean, I don't have no wants that I really could say that I'm lacking anything. I'm not. But it's, those things aren't even important to me. It's the peace that I have in him that's important. The joy of watching him move in my children and watching him grow and become more and more of him, you know? It's just, it's just too much. It's too, it's, it's too good to hold. It's too good to hold. So I encourage you to seek ye first the kingdom of God. For my master came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying that the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. It's right here. So repent and believe in the gospel. It's the truth. The kingdom of God is here. And for all those who have faith enough to believe it, they shall receive the benefits. For the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but it's love and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Don't let the enemy steal it from you. Mark 13, 19 says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what was sown in their heart. That's why I try very hard tonight to, this morning to explain it so that you would understand it, so that he wouldn't be able to snatch it from you because it's too good. It's too good for you to miss. Please, please, please seek it. Amen. Amen. God really loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only son, wrapped himself up in flesh and came to this earth to give us back the kingdom, to return Eden in our heart. Hallelujah. Don't let it go by the wayside. Don't let this message get, get taken by, you know, birds, the, the enemies come and steal what was sown in your heart away. I pray that it's firmly planted in Jesus' name. And if you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, just ask the Father. Say, Lord, God, I, I really need Jesus in my heart. I believe he's your son. I believe that he died and he rose. He died for my sins and he rose for me to be forgiven. I receive the forgiveness and I ask him to be my king, my Lord, my Savior, and to let his spirit rule in my heart. I need it, Lord. I need you to help me. So come and be my king and do all that stuff that she said, Lord God, I believe it. I want it. I desire it. I submit myself to you. And he will. He'll come. He said, Master said, I will withhold no good gift 
from his children. So he will give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him. So seek the kingdom. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Knock on the door of the, of the gospel, of the kingdom of God. Knock on the gate. He'll open it. He'll let you. He'll come in and sup with you. He said, I stand at the door knocking. And if you open it up, I'll come in and I'll sit with you. I'll stay. And I'll bring out by the blessings with me. And he does. So just let him in. Just let him in. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. It's the best thing I've ever had in my life. I thank you for it. Lord, I pray your word went forth the way you wanted to. I pray and I come against the enemy now in the name of Jesus and I command him not to put his hands on this message. Let it go forth, Lord God, to the highways and byways. Let everybody hear that the kingdom of God is here. Repent, seek it, and get in it. While it is day, while there's a chance, while you are here and the door is open. For a time is going to come, Lord God, when you're going to close the gate. The bridegroom will come and the gate will be closed and there won't be no more entry. And no man knows what day or time that's going to happen, Lord. So I pray that they get in now. Hallelujah. That not one be lost that come through this line. That not one who hears this message gets lost, Lord God, but that all will come to repentance. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you that they get saved. I thank you that they don't get cast away, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name for all that you desire, Lord God, to hear this message and to receive the word in their heart. Let it be planted deep, Lord God. And I give you praise for it being done according to your good purpose. In Jesus' wonderful name, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, that's it. I pray you have a wonderful worship service this morning and that the Holy Spirit move in you like never before. I pray that in Jesus' name. Have a great week. God willing, I'll see you next Saturday. If he say so and he give me something to talk about, I'll be here. If not, I won't. It's his business, not mine. I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness. Repent. The kingdom of God is here. Get in. It's good. And very good. That's it. He loves you. The Lord loves you a whole lot. And I love you too. So have a great week. God bless you. Bye.